Yes. And that as I'm singing and that we are partaking in worship, you're going to see that there will be the heat of the Holy Ghost that's going to touch you. Yes. And some will be having healing, others with deliverances, but watch this, precious saints. God loves us even if you're not born again. I want to tell you something. God will meet you where you are. Isn't yes. that the way it is? Amen. Because I remember I got the gifts of God before I was born again. I was prophesied before I was born again. Because God already says in his word, doesn't he? He says that he knew me even before I was in my mother's womb. Yes. The Bible tells me that God has given us purpose and predestined it. So I'm talking to everyone right here, right now, that you have already been predestined. I don't care if you, listen, I don't care if you know Jesus right now, but you are going to know Jesus. Because the Bible says, I've already predestined you. And he says, and all you need to do is just walk towards it. Isn't that a good word? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And I have with me Pastor uh, uh, Yuri from uh, Jerusalem, oh my Capernaum, God. Capernaum. And I'll tell you, what a precious, he has such an honor. And as, as I see this, I want you to know this. Can I, can I share another, I want you to do another language, because I don't know who's watching. Quiero decir a ustedes en este momento, que Dios está haciendo una cosa tan maravillosa. De que cuando nos do, voy a cantar un canción para él, de que ustedes dónde está, no sé dónde está, en, en Puerto Rico, estás en, en uh, uh, Managua, Nicaragua, no sé, pero que sí sé es que Dios está ahí también. Y que cuando nosotros estamos uh, uh, dando adoración a él, de que él va a llegar a ti para tocar tu cuerpo, a tocar tu matrimonio, para tocar tu casa y tu familia. Vas a ver que tenemos un Dios que ama a nosotros. Amén. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, do you know that that was a miracle? Because I didn't used to speak Spanish. What? I, oh, yes, what happened was, I, um, I was sharing even last night that I went into this, uh, they asked me to go pray for a man that was about two, three minutes from dying. Mm -hmm. And I began to pray and pray and God after 20 minutes says, are you finished? And so I said, and how many know what, like, but at that moment I started crying. Because I said, oh Lord Jesus, have I offended the spirit of God? Did I come with a pompous, pompous heart? Did I come uh, uh, with a thought of, look at me? How many know that there are many pastors and five yes. ministers that look at themselves rather than look at God? Amen. That they go and they say, look at what I, I have done when they have done nothing. Amen. Amen. And so so I went there and I thought, well, maybe maybe I was. Remember this, not always do you know where you are. Come on, people. Oh. And God will, God through your life will begin to, watch this, he will begin to reveal and unfold the more of you so that you could have the more of him. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So, so I said, Father, forgive me. And he said, um, no, my son, your heart is right. He says, but the problem we're having is that I just don't want to do it that way. So I want you to turn to someone. We have an audience here. Praise God. Give the Lord a hand praise for this audience. Thank you, Jesus. And for those who are out there right now. And, and, and God tells me this. He says, I don't want to do it that way. Isn't that the most amazing thing? Because we, we are taught we have to pray or exactly. we fast or we do it this way. That's you go to the church, right. you go to an elder yeah. of, the, of the church, you come to a power of agreement yes. and, 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 and in the name of Jesus and all these things happen. Right. That's biblical, biblical and that's God. But when God tells me, I don't want to do it that way, you want to know what he's telling me? He's telling me, be still and know that I am God. Oh, yeah. yes. Be still and know that I am God. And so I said, then, then what, what is it you want me to do? He says, I want you to sing. Now, many don't know this, but I used to sing in the world. Oh, you did? Oh, yes. Mm. Uh, uh. <laughs> yes, I used to sing in the world. Uh, and, and God gave that to me for, for, for him and not really the world. Because even though I was doing great things, I tried out for a Broadway show. I called, the Broadway. Yeah, oh, you heard about that? I tried out for the Broadway show Carousel in New York, and I received starring role. Wow. Uh, uh, and I was only 18 years old. But, but I was not able to do it. My father said no. 
And, but isn't that God? Yes. Of course, I never thought it was. When my father said, of no, course, I said, how could you do? Yeah, I want to be that yeah. star. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. But it was God because if I've gone that route, how many know we would not be where we are today? Yeah. Hallelujah. So Hallelujah. God knew that he was going to do something. So amen to that. Amen. So when I was there, uh, uh, like I was share, sharing with you, they had asked me if I were to pray for this, this man who was just been uh -huh. dying. And he, I looked at him and he's already, his body already accepted death. And uh, the young lady, young girl who told me, please pray for my grandpa, three months already co in a coma, uh -huh. and they were not giving him but a few minutes, I would say. So a few minutes? A few minutes. He was done? Yes. Because his body has already accepted death okay. and, uh, and, and was completely dysfunctioning and closing. You know, things started to close, his organs. And so um, after when God told me, after I kept on praying, and the young girl kept on looking at me like, come on, heal my grandpa. How many know when you're desperate? Yes. yes. When you yes. desperate and you hear that there's a man or a woman that God uses, yes. you desperate. Yes. yes. And so I looked at her and I said, okay. I was so scared of her. Because she kept on saying, come on, oh, do it. Pressure. Yes. But the Lord tells me, are you done? And I said, I said yes. And he said, if your heart is right. Mm. But I don't want to do it that way. And he said, do you not remember how I dipped a man seven times in the river? Right. Do I need the river? And the time I spit on the ground and took the mud yeah. and placed it upon uh, the eye, did I need the mud? Yeah. He says, I just wanted to do it that way. Yeah. You see, God is teaching us Hallelujah. to be still yeah. and to hear his still small yeah. voice. Yeah. So that what we do, how we do, when we do, where we do it, will be all of him and none of us. Amen? Wow, 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 wow. So at that time, he tells me, I want you to sing. This is what I'm getting at. I want you to sing. I said, you want me to sing? I said, okay. And he goes, I want you to sing something you know. I was finding out that he was a Spanish man. Uh, uh, yeah, he was a Spanish man. He didn't speak English? Zero. And so I said, what does he understand? Just Spanish. You know, he's, he, he, I think he's Latin. No. Well, no, I'm lying. I, lying. I, I did. I would, mine was... Burrito, <laughs> taco, <laughs> and I, I have think to we say, know those. no, you know, and then in school, you know, you go, you, you yes. know, how many people go, go to high school, yeah. hola Paco, uh -huh. donde yeah. estas, yeah. Yeah. you know, that kind of stuff, but to really speak, or I had no, 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 I, I didn't know that, but, so I told God, God, I, I don't remember, I don't, I don't know how to do that, he says, yes, you do, and I said, I do, he goes, yes, you do. Instantly, I felt this heat of the Holy Ghost to come through me like it were honey, like very hot. It went through all your body. All through my body. Okay. And at that moment, I knew. And this is the song I'm going to sing. Oh, okay. But that I've never heard. I didn't know the song at all. You, uh, what, wait, you couldn't speak the language. No. You didn't know the song. No. But my God. the heat of God, the Spirit of God came upon you and you knew. And, gave, and God gave me the gift. So you just kind of waited for his pump and just sang it? No. When he did this, I knew. Oh, okay. It's a, the, when God begins to move in this way, it's a, hear the word, it's a dimension. Okay. And it's a, it's a realm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. In that realm, Come on now. there is a knowing yeah. in your knower. Yeah. Yeah. What God is doing, you will know what oh, he's doing. Yeah. Can you call him on that or how does that work? Oh, you can. Okay. Okay. When you begin to, and I'll tell you. The key is worship. Yes. Okay. Oh, come on. Yes. The key is worship. You cannot get to heaven or in, even in your prayers until you have a connection into worship. Amen. Okay. Tell wow. Shout out, Tell 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 and so God drew me through worship to him. And so I, I could not. I So anyway, so all of a sudden I knew the song in here. And I said, and, and, and all of a sudden this is what came out. Satura me Señor con tu espíritu Satura me Señor con tu espíritu Yeah. 
late en mi corazón Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Well, you know what? You had asked if I would continue singing. Please. Why don't we sing? You saw a river, did yes. you know? Yes. Why don't we sing about the river? Oh, okay. You want to do that? Yes. Amen. How about you all want to do that? Yeah. Let's do that. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We got to get some testimony in there. Oh, we're going to, you, you know we are, okay? I've got 
a river of life deep inside of me. Did you want to, does everybody want to hear Dr. Al speak a little bit, teach a little bit, or do you want to hear him As sing one more? As the Spirit has led, was this Dr. Hallelujah. Yeah. Well, let's share yeah. this way. Let's do a lot of it, okay? Okay. Let's do it like this. First thing I'm going to share with you, you, you had told me before we came yes. on air, you had said, Apostle, what, how did you start it? What happened? Yes. How many know sometimes you don't know? Okay. Jesus. That you are already started. Come on. Oh, oh all right now. Sometimes you don't know that even when you were young, that God would already be preparing you, or I call it the prerequisites okay. that He was already doing in your life, Ooh. so that you could then recognize that you were no longer yours but His. Uh, hmm. Amen. 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 I'll tell you from the age of. Uh, uh, this is all in my book called But I Know a God. Show us your book. Oh, you want to I'll hold it up for you. You want to hold it up? Sure. I think there's a handsome man in front of yeah, that. I'm not sure. Hallelujah. It looks better in person. <laughs> Praise okay. you, Jesus. 
but I know God. But I'm going to share this with you. When, when I was six months old or six years old, I was likened to a little boy in a plastic bubble. I was deformed. I could eat very, very few foods, and I everything airborne would, would, would I would have an allergic reaction. And God, God, I didn't know. I knew God as as a Catholic, and praise God for their Christians too. Come on, but I didn't have a relationship. But can you imagine, as, as from six months old to six years old, yes. I was like a deformed little baby. Mm. My chest was out like this, and I couldn't eat very few foods. If I if I would lick a banana, lick a banana, within minutes I'd be in the hospital. Oh my goodness! If I would taste a strawberry, my whole lip would just balloon, like balloon. Like there were it's unbelievable, but what would happen within I say within twenty to a half hour from sniveling cold of an allergic reaction, uh -huh. I'd go into uh, a bronchitis, then to asthma, then to pneumonia, then to double pneumonia. Oh my Can you imagine? No. But how many know it's because the enemy knew what I was going to do Amen. with the Amen. breath that God had given me. Yes. He knew, he says, if I could take his lungs out, he won't sing for the Lord. Oh, that's right. So what I'm trying to tell you is that God, God allowed me to go through this, watch this, so that I would learn to have compassion and passion for those who were ill. Oh, that's good, that's good. And that's a good word. Yes. Because I'm, I'm saying this with you, not that I thought it was good going through it, but I, God allowed me to go through it so that I could understand when someone is desperate. When someone is going through, so that I can have that compassion for them. Because remember, God doesn't move through emotion. He moves through compassion. Yes. And so that's why, so I didn't know that I was going to do what I do all over the world. But I'm going to tell you something, precious man of God. I was healed at the age of six years old. And it was via television, through the television. Well, there's a word right there. Right, through the television. And it was Dr. Oral Roberts who said, if there be someone infirmed in your home, place your hand upon the, the person and in the power of agreement, agree with me. And they did. My parents didn't know what they were doing. Come on. Sometimes you don't know what you're doing. They just do it. And so what happened is they saw nothing. My mom looked at my dad. My dad looked at my mom. They went, got me and put me back in bed. And they said, well, it didn't work, son. And I looked at them. I said, it didn't. No. Two weeks later, they take me to my medical appointment. Uh -huh. They checked my body. And the doctor came to my mom and says, uh, Mama, you might think this is funny, but it's not. Bring me the son that we've been taking care of for six years. Because that's not him. Whoa. And then and she goes, what are you talking about? I only have one son at the time. Yes. And a daughter, this is my son. He goes, no, it's not. Ma'am, come with me to the x-rays. And they saw that all my bones of the rib cage have went back to oh back. Oh, my God. That, oh, yeah. that they checked my allergies. Oh, I have no more allergies. Oh, and I'm telling you something. God, I it was so exciting to me because I was now able to go in summer outside without a jacket on. Oh, yeah. my God. I was able to watch, have an ice cream that I couldn't even eat for six years. Because oh. cold would even do it to me. Wow. What am I saying, precious people that are watching? We know a God. Yes. And God wants to heal you. Listen, yeah. God wants to heal you. He wants to give you, watch this, <laughs> give you your desires. And I believe tonight is going to happen. Yes. Hallelujah. I believe so many wonderful things. Hallelujah. So, can you imagine... Then at six, watch this. How did I know? At the age of eight, you know? I was in uh, a Murchison Street School in Los Angeles, and I'm I'm playing tether tether ball, mm -hmm. and playing kickball. You know all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And the bell rings. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden I said, "Oh, you, you're wrong with you. That means you have to hurry and put put everything away and then run to your classroom." Yeah. Well, we all did that and we started running, but all of a sudden my feet got stuck on the on the on the blacktop. 
Not that the, there was tar. It, it, I just couldn't move. So I waited for everyone to leave. And I looked up and I said, I don't, I don't know what's wrong with me. I said, help me. That's all I could think of, to look up and ask God to help me. Help me. And then what came out of the, my belly, mm. it was an utterance that wasn't mine. At eight years old, this is what I said. I was born for purpose. And nothing, no one, or any, anything or no one is going to harm me or stop me. And then click. I was let go and I ran in my room. I didn't tell anyone about it. How many know that's kind of crazy? So I said, I'm not saying nothing. But I stood there in my, my classroom, in my chair, and I said, I was born for a purpose. Now I'm going to show you something. When you, I don't believe in numbers, but I do believe in the numbers of God. Numerology, I don't believe in, but I do believe in the numbers of God. Hallelujah. And, and when, so it was at eight years old that God allowed me to prophesy to the winds of what my ministry would become. Mm. What it was doing. Right. At eight years old, eight is, is, the eight is called new beginning. Oh, okay. Yeah. It was going to be the new beginning, my life, how it was going to change. Mm -hmm. At eight, then at at uh, 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 twelve years old, mm -hmm. again number twelve, I was then relieved of my emotional status. Why? Because they would call me names because I couldn't run when I was younger. I couldn't play football. How many know why? I couldn't get near the dirt. How many know why? I couldn't. And then when I could, I was afraid too. Yes. So that all these these names, bullying would do. How many know what I'm talking about? Amen. And names that I will not speak today, but you can imagine the yes, word they yes, gave yes, me. Yes, yes, yes. And I would tell them, but I'm not. I'm just afraid. They didn't understand that. How many know they're not going to understand that? No. But children sometimes can be very hard on you. Yeah. Yes. And so it took till 12 years old for me to relieve, to be released from the hurt and the pain and the emotions. Amen? Oh, wow. Amen. But at 14 years old, watch, say 14. 14. 14. 14, one, four is five. Five is grace, but it also is penta, or, or called government of God. Oh, hallelujah, that's good. So I was there at 14 years old, vacuuming my parents' home, because we were we were raised very strict. We mm -hmm. had chores and, you know, mm -hmm. and I was I'm vacuuming, and, and, and all of a sudden, I heard God ought to be right here. And he said, my son, for I have elected you to go throughout the world and through you, I will heal my people. Mm. You will be like a doctor, but you will not go to school for it. For power shall I give upon your hands. So I said, okay. So I turned off the, the, the vacuum and by the way, it was a, an Electrolux big old monster, you know. Mm. It's, and I turned it off and I said, hey, mom, she was having her breakfast coffee. I said, mom, she goes, yes, son. I think I'm going to be a doctor. Yes. She goes, son, it's good because of what you've gone through. You're like giving back. That's good. And I said, yeah. She goes, but mom, I want to travel the world. And heal many people. Son, that's so admirable. My goodness, that's wonderful. I said, and you know what? There's another thing. She goes, what's that? And I'm not going to go to school for it. Oh, what'd she say? She said, get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> spiritual things to non-spiritual people yes. is nothing more than foolishness, right? Yes. So she didn't get it. No, did I. But that was at, that was at 14 years old. Okay. I get married at the age of 20, and from 20 to 33, I was doing clubs, mm -hmm. lounges, mm -hmm. things, and, and doing well. You know, I enjoyed it. It was fun. But my grandmother, who was a Seventh-day Adventist and loved Jesus with all her heart, this woman walked with Jesus. Oh. She would tell me, what are you worried about? I know a God. And that's why the name of the book is Ooh, But I Know good. a God. She goes, But I know a God, son. So when she died, I died too. Because she was my God. I knew God through her. Some people need to hear this. Oh, that's right. good. Say that. I knew God, but I knew God through her. Whatever she said, I believed. Yeah. 
Yeah. I didn't read the word of God. I didn't I, I didn't pray as pizza. much. All I did was say, Grandma, what do you think? What did God speak to you? Mm. And all she would say, I know God. You're fine. This is like and she moved in the miraculous. Amen. She did. Mm -hmm. So when she passed away, I felt alone. I began to have panic attacks, anxiety, nervous condition at 33. I would land up on the freeway. My hands would curl because I would go through a panic attack to the point where I would begin to, uh, to not be able to breathe. So an ambulance would have to come to take me to the emergency. They would ask, what is your name? I don't know. I would, for two hours, I would be out. How did Satan want to take oh. Oh. My God. And the, the, the doctor said that my body was shutting down. My organs were shutting what? down. So they would have to rush me again. How many of you can die of a broken heart? Yes. Yeah. 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 And so I was there. And, and finally, I decided I need something. So I went to a Catholic charismatic uh, night service. Mm -hmm. And watch this. I'm sitting there and I'm seeing this. I'm going, mm -mm, no. Ro -bo -bo -bo. What's that? <laughs> no. That's good. And then, they, then they're laying hands and people are falling. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I sit like this and I heard. I said, well, maybe I'll try it. So I get up and started walking to go to this one lady. And audibly I hear the Lord say, not her, her. Whoa. Now watch this. I'm hearing God and I'm saying, why? And he wouldn't answer. So I went to her. All she did was put her hand on my head and I was out like a light. Ooh. And that moment, I was completely delivered and healed of, of panic attacks, anxieties, oh, and nerve condition. Oh. Amen. Good but after that, at the age of 33, like I told you, oh. that's when I came to know Jesus as my Lord and Savior. That I had a two and a half hour visitation with him. Mm. My God. It was the most amazing. Oh my God. But before that, forgive me, before that, just mm. about a, two weeks before that, I had gone to the same church just to talk with Jesus. I got on my knees in one of the pews and I said, Lord, I don't know you. Oh. Mm. <coughs> I'm dying. I'm so all alone. Yes, I have a beautiful wife. I have my precious three boys. We ha I have a house, a new car. I have all that. But there's something missing. Mm. Is it my grandmother? And but he wouldn't answer. So I sat there, weeping. And all of a sudden, watch again. The unction came again. And I said these words, precious man of God. I said, Father, Usha Roboso. You feel? Yeah, If you want to use me, use me. I am yours. I cannot live like this. Use me. But if you're going to use me, use me. Use me big. That man could never deny that I serve you. I said, I want to go to nations where the, that when I place my foot upon, which is wild, that when I touch the country, it's tame. That's good. Do you know what I didn't know what I was talking about? Shut up. I didn't know what I was talking about because it wasn't me speaking. Mm. Then I said, now, if you want to really do that, I need a proof. And I'll bow before you. I'll kneel before you. I'll worship you all the days of my life. And I said, all I need is to see your face. Lord, let me see your face. He didn't say anything. And I got up, wiped my eyes, and I went to work. That night, I came home from work. My, my the dinner was ready. My my wife had cooked, and we ate. And 
uh, we, I played with the kids. They showered and they went to bed. You know, the, the routine. Yeah. I was with my wife. We talked and it was getting late and she went said, honey, I'm going to excuse myself. I need to go to bed. I'm tired. I said, absolutely. We kissed and she went to bed. I stood in the den looking at TV and, and I see the silhouettes and the shadows of television in the dark and I'm looking and I hear this again right here. Look this way. I got so scared. I got up, started looking. Okay, someone's in the house. <laughs> Somebody is in this house. Oh, wow. And I kept on looking. There was nothing. I sat mm -hmm. back down. I thought, well, maybe it was the TV, the background, something. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, I, I said, okay, okay, okay. I'm not going crazy. I'm fine. <laughs> then about 20 seconds later, I hear, look this way. I got up. I said, no, I heard that. And I went throughout, I went throughout most of the house. Found nothing. I sat again. I said, okay, Lord, I'm, I'm sorry, but if it's you, I don't understand. And then I looked at t television again. And then he says, come to me now. Mm. And I said, no, that can't be me. Because I don't talk to me like that. Mm -hmm. Because God was being very, the Lord was being very forceful. He needed for me to see something. So mm -hmm. I got up and I went through every corner of the house, mm -hmm. down the hall, in the bathroom, downstairs, the whole thing. And the only thing that was left was my kitchen. And I thought, well, Jesus won't go to the kitchen. Come on now. <laughs> so I walked her in the dark. I walked in the kitchen. And not on the drapery, above the drapery, started to appear the face of the Lord. Oh, my goodness. Now, I'm not talking a shadow. I'm not talking a, a sketch. I'm not talking toast that's been burned and now you can see it looks like Jesus. That's good. I'm talking flesh. Flesh. Like I'm looking at yours. Oh. And I stood this close to his and I and he was just suspended, flesh. And I looked at him and I said, oh, Lord Jesus, you have all of skin. Oh my God. I would go, oh my God. Your beard is, I can see through your beard. It's kind of wispy. Your hair, I, I talked about his hair, that it was not as full and beautiful as we see it. It's kind of wispy, but he was strong. He, I could see his jaw. It was strong. So I said, you know, it is true about the word of God that you, that well, I guess you say that you're not really handsome. You're not that becoming. Right. And, and, and he just looked at me. Then I thought, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> But how many know that even though you think it, <laughs> he knows it. Amen. So I looked like this, and then I then I looked into his eyes, and it was over. Mm. The beauty and the love of God that's yeah. in his eyes has a depth I know not of. Mm. I cannot describe the feeling, the uh, the the feeling of of peace, the feeling of love, the euphoria. Unbelievable that I looked at him and I said, Oh my God, this is that my prayer. You're going to use me. Ooh. Because I said, Let me see what? Your, Your yes. face. So then I said, Wait a second. I told the Lord to wait. <laughs> Went down the hall, got my wife. She didn't want to come. I'm, you know, mm -mm, you saw something. I don't want to say. But she comes with me. We walk down and I don't say what. And I just went like that. And she said, oh, that's Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. So she saw it with me for about 20 minutes. And then my wife said, could it be the light post? <laughs> How many know we do this kind of oh, stuff? Oh, that's good. Yeah, that yeah. is so good. The light post. And maybe the ivy with the window yes. and the drapery and with the this one. and with the that and with the bread and the that that it made <laughs> Jesus. And watch this, guys. I'm going to tell you. How many of we love to appease our wives? Yes. You know what you don't I, I do. So uh, in my mind, I looked at my wife to say, maybe. I knew it was God, Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Yes. But just to appease. I, mm -hmm. I, I hadn't even said, maybe. In here, I said, and seven bolts of lightning went down through my body that I bent, would bend over oh and I would goodness. oh I go like seven of them strong and my wife would say what's wrong what's wrong she didn't see it I felt it Ooh. and then the Lord audibly speaks again and says 
You ask to see my face. Mm. I show you my face, and now you doubt me. All right. Mm. Uh, I started like a weeper. I st uh, would you have cried? Oh yeah. Yes. Mine would oh, yeah. be like, <clears throat> I messed up. Oh God. Throw yeah. me away. Yeah. You know he's gonna ex excommunicate me or right. something like this. I said, Lord, please forgive me. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Didn't speak. Lord, please forgive me. I'm sorry. Give me a sec. You're a God of a second chance. How many know we know these things when we need it? You are God That's of a good. second chance. That's so good. give me a second chance. Please, Lord. I heard nothing. And all of a sudden, in the way back of somewhere, mm -hmm. audibly he says, okay. Mm. So then, two weeks from there, two to three weeks from there, I'm sitting with a gentleman who used to be my, my uh, one of my singers, backup singers. We're talking here at night. He's a Baptist, knows the word of God, but does not understand the power. Okay. So he's sitting there. We're talking. All of a sudden, my whole house, about this high, which is about two and a half to three feet high, mm -hmm. uh, all over my house, living room, dining room, kitchen, uh, hallways, all of it was filled with uh, I call them whirlwinds of glory. There was as thick and bellowy as of white wow. smoke, mm -hmm. like clouds. Okay, you could walk through them though, right? Oh yes, okay. but it was so thick you couldn't see through them. Mm -hmm. But there were hundreds of them. They were all individual, but yet they had a momentum with each other. Mm -hmm. And I saw this, and the first thing I thought was, "Oh my God, my house is burning." Well, I thought. Oh yeah. <laughs> And so then the Lord comes again, and he says to me, for I have waited for such a time as this, my son. So now he says, for now, I am going to separate you, sanctify you, and consecrate you, that you'll have. Okay, he had me sit and began to speak to me about things to happen. Unbelievable things that I, some I cannot share. But for two hours, I felt this, I'm going to call it this, his presence go through me so strong that it would double over every 15 seconds for two hours. Oh my and he says, what I'm giving you is glory. Ah. Oh. And he says, at the end of it, I was wasted. I get up and I said, give me more. He said, my son, I can't give you an ounce because your body would physically explode. Ooh. We're talking about atoms, electrons, neutrons. We're talking about substance and matter. This is what God, who's made all things. Yes. So he knows how much we can take yes. and how much you can take over, yes. right? So after that, he said, you will travel the world like I said, my son. And he said these words, he said, you will never have to worry about money. You feel that? Yes. He says, because your worry and concern will never be how much money you have mm. because it will be perpetual. Your worry and concern will be how to dispense of it. Oh, hallelujah. Now, do I know how that's going to happen? I don't need to. That's right. So my point to you is, I said to God, Lord, if you're going to use me, give me the gifts. Yes. Not for me, but for people. Yes. There's a gentleman right now that's viewing us. Your name is Robert. Robert, you have a heart condition. And it's been for eight months that you've had a heart condition. I ask you right now to heal. God's going to heal you. Place your hand upon your heart. And in the power of agreement, I'm telling you, Robert, you're going to be healed right now in Jesus' mighty name. I see a, a, a young lady by the name of Julia. I see a skin condition. God's healing you right now. Yes. Don't be embarrassed. God says, watch what I do in Jesus' mighty name. 
Hallelujah. Isn't God good? Yes. We have more time, sir. If oh. you don't mind. Did you want to sit down and get into a little bit of Whatever speaking? you would like to do. Because I can't stand up. How many nails are you doing? <laughs> right. Hallelujah. Oh, okay. Our producer, oh, no. director. Our, our, our director is telling us we we got to close for now, and then we'll pick it back up in a half hour. Is that okay with you, sir? Oh, my goodness. It, uh, wait, wait. Is it okay with you guys? Will you come back so we can talk some more? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Until next week, I'm Dr. Ken, Dr. Al. We'll see you, Pastor Talks. God bless you. Good evening, and welcome to Pastor Talks. I'm Dr. Ken, and with me is the famous Dr. Apostle Al Fornes, and with his new book, But I Know a God. How are you, Apostle? I am doing well, and thank you so much for inviting me. I'm, I'll tell you, it's wonderful to be with people that are anointed and appointed, and um, I, I, just, I just love your spirit. Thank you, sir. Amen. So I'm, I'm excited. Well, I want to jump right in, if I may. I want to talk to you about, we saw you last night, Ministry and Song, and you think I can get you to sing? Oh, song? my goodness. Just one. Absolutely. Okay. I'll do But I also, before we get there, uh, I was just blown away. We saw your, your healing ministry. Everybody in the meeting got healed. But I was enamored by your accurate, prophetic words. 100% everybody I talked to in the audience, and it was a big crowd. Can you share with us a little bit, or the audience, of how God uses you prophetically? Uh, yes, I, I, I'll share with you. When I came to know the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, I was attending a church, and I knew very little, but I knew enough to know mm -hmm. about some of the gifts. I didn't know how they operated, mm -hmm. but what I would do is I, I would read anything to do with prophecy oh. and word of knowledge, and so that at least I could have the letter of the law. But how many know the letter law killeth, right. yes. yeah, but it's the it's the spirit. spirit. Mm. And so I, I, I wanted to know at least that first, because I'm going to tell you in all things, I always, I always say these words to everybody. Mm -hmm. There is an algorithm that God uses on everything we do throughout God's kingdom. And I'm going to give you that algorithm. Please. I call it a secret, but it's a good one. When God, God showed me in, in, in King David... Yeah. What did King David do? What was his, though he, he tended the sheep yeah. and he did those things, but what did God do? God showed him that he needed to have equal amount of skill Ooh, and anointing. Okay. You can't have one without the other. Oh, I see. Yeah. That's good. So there's got to be a balance. That's called the maturity. Okay. Okay. You then start to excel and go into other realms. As you continue. Okay. So it's progressive. It's progressive. Okay. So. Can I tell the people while we're sitting down? The last show we did, it was so anointed. He sang, he preached, he prayed for the sick. I couldn't even stand up, so I asked him if we could sit down. Sorry. Go ahead, Apostle. <laughs> no, he made me sit down. I'm just, no, that's not true. That is not true. We're having a good time. Yes. But listen, so what I started doing was I would go to places where I knew there, there were prophets. Yes. I would sit there and I would train myself. I started saying, okay, God, give me what, what's wrong with that girl right there? And then I, all he would tell me was say something like, sad. I would hear that, I'm going, oh, that's, that's big. <laughs> <laughs> but then I would hear the prophet go, and the Lord has told me that you have, you're in the state of depression. I said, oh, that's sad. <laughs> that's sad. So I, little by little, I started honing the gift. Come on. Okay. Honing the gift. Yeah. I would never say I was, never said that I moved in it. I just took a, a year to so two you years. Covered, you can cover the gifts, is that what you're Oh, doing? yes, you can. You oh, seek for them. Okay. Seek it, you shall find. Okay. Right? So I would just, I would seek for it, and, and I kept on and kept on until where I said, okay, I need more. And all of a sudden, uh, I, my pastor at the time, uh, after about six six years or so, uh -huh. Uh -huh. my pastor would be prophesying and stuff or pray for people, and the Lord would just automatically start speaking to me. And I would look, and I was going, oh, she's not here. Yeah. And yes. he goes, yes, for the Lord has healed you with cancer. And then the Lord says, no, I didn't. Mm -hmm. So then I go, what do I do? What do I do? So I know protocol, and I know how to submit, Amen. and I know not to uh, usurp authority. No, no. Right. And so I would wait until he sat next to me, and I would say, Pastor, God spoke to me that she needs to be prayed again, but she needs to for 
forgive her father oh, who right. molested her. Oh my goodness. That's good. And so he, he would say, well, if God said that to you, then you go do it. <laughs> Precious saints, let me tell you, I'm not, I'm not coming against any pastor, no. but do not get hurt. Because most of the time, it's because they're not in that realm. Boom. Amen. That's good. That's a good key. So, so what we have is it's, it's called intimidation. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, you That's learn good, this. It's it? a good thing to pray for them and love on them. Yeah. So I said, okay. So I get up. I says, can I pray for you? She goes, but I've been praying for I said, yes, but you're not healed. Mm -hmm. So what I went in her ear. I said, for the Lord told me to tell you that it was your father who molested you. You need to forgive him. She started weeping and weeping and said, it. it is true. Amen. And she goes, I can't forgive him. I said, if you don't forgive him, you will not be healed. Oh, that's a good word. So then I said, let me do this. Ask God to help you to forgive. And she did. And then she says, yes, I can do it. She, she says, Father, Daddy, I forgive you for what you did to me. And then I looked at her and just barely placed my hand on her. And she fell as though I hit her, and she got got up completely healed. Now, is this something normally you start, or just this started right now at that point? Have you you've been doing that all along? Well, it, or was he training you all along? The Lord was been, had continued to train me. Okay. So for the and, folks and out there, it's a training process, you're saying? It, it, I, I believe that in the supernatural, things must be done decent and in order. Do you need a mentor, sir? I'm always I say that. yes. Okay. You must. And so at first it was... Of, of Papa Hagen, oh, and, yeah, know. you know, and Smith Wigglesworth. Ooh. I was reading all these books. I said, "Oh, mm, I want to do that. Mm -hmm. I want, Lord, I want to do that. I want to do that." And so he started to see. You know, watch this. Let me let me share with you something. Yeah, help us. Sometimes we think that it's us that are asking when it was God that gave. Hey. Mm. Hallelujah. See, that is already inside of you. Yeah. And so it's, it's, it says, because it says in the word of God, yes. the gift will make room for itself. Oh, hallelujah. So the gift will say, I need to come out now. So you need to you, you need to have that desire. That's why some ah. have a desire to lay hands, a desire to, to speak in time, a desire to, to, to bring deliverance. I see. So that's that's what I, that's what mine was. Worship since I was young, mm -hmm. the pray, you know, singing and stuff. So that was already placed in me. Okay. And then when I, so I, and let me tell you this way, mm -hmm. God knew that I had to have a grandma to be what she was oh. so that I can say, wait a second. You modeled after her. Come on. Okay. Man. But there is a God. I knew that there was a God. I didn't know him, right. but I knew that there was that working. There was that realm. Okay. And so throughout my years, I've been in the Lord over 30 something years. Ooh. And I'm going to tell you something, precious man of God. Mm -hmm. I have learned that there are so many realms of God. Mm -hmm. Realms. Mm -hmm. Realms. And, and there are times God has spoken to me on things mm -hmm. that, that are so overwhelming that I cannot even speak some of them off the pulpit. Really? Because we're not ready to hear it. Oh. Man. Can you imagine waking up in the middle of the night because you know he woke you up. Mm -hmm. And you're facing your wall that's that's blank and you're seeing a movie okay and it's god that's having this movie that i'm seeing mm. and the movie that i'm seeing is me in it mm. wow. and he's talking to me and saying do you see that this is where you're going to go this is what you're going to do and i start seeing different countries and stuff i'm telling you so that's how you saw it before you went well m m anywhere i go in the world mm. when i get there i'll tell my wife when, when I get there, I'm going to see this, this, and this. And they said, okay. We go there. All of a sudden, there's that house. There's that door. There's that whatever it is or that person situation. Wow. Because, but the thing is, I pined for it. I pined for it. I wanted more. You were hungry. Completely. Okay. And I still am. Okay. I want more. So, uh, uh, and what about the gift of wisdom? Does that help you in the prophetic with the word of oh, knowledge? it has to. Let me let me sh let me share with you. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Uh, let me share with you this, and I'm so glad you you asked about wisdom. In everything we do, there is decorum, okay. spiritual decorum. There's pulpit etiquette, okay. and you you it's the Holy Spirit. If you want to allow Him to teach you, He will teach you what to do, when to do, and what to speak. There are times I have been. I'll tell you the truth. I was in I was in Louisiana. 
and uh, there was, was this a, recently or uh, no, recently no okay. no a few years back about a year ago okay. or two I was in Louisiana and there was this this pastor from Rhode Island big ministry with his wife and his two children mm -hmm. the children were two daughters about a teenage mm -hmm. and I looked at them they looked beautiful they stood there and they didn't even say they were ministers I looked at him and I said you're a pastor aren't you he says yes so in his ear, watch it, this is called decorum. See, God never told you to split nothing up. And I said to him in his ear, but the Lord has told me that you've been working with uh, with uh, uh, homosexual things. Oh. And I we said... know that it... <laughs> no, 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 you probably don't. I don't know. So I said, and he looked at me and he wept. I said, I'm not here to bring this out and I won't bring it out. But I do want to tell you something. God loves you enough. To want to heal you now. Ooh. Hallelujah. And I said, is this true? He says, yes. And I said, you, you've been trying since the age of 16 to stop. He said, yes. Mm -hmm. So I looked at the wife, and, and they were just weeping. They don't know what I was talking about because it was in his ear. Okay. Now, what am I saying? I could have said, yeah. man of God, do you mm -hmm. not know that you have been... What would have done to the wow, children? Wow, or wow, even wow. to... Yeah. See, that's called... Having season your words that it may be palatable. Mm -hmm. What what is the best method to get the point across? Because God, people say, how many of you heard this before, audience? Where you hear and people right now out in the, in the airways when they say, "Well, you know what? I'm a prophet and God spoke to me and I'm going to say it exactly the way He's yeah, told me to yeah. say it." Yeah, I hear that all the time. Okay, yes. watch this. That's not even true. Mm -hmm. It is taught that, but it's not true. Because the Bible says that the that the, uh, the the Holy Spirit is subject to the prophet. Did you hear that? Write that down. That's good. It's subject to the prophet. So he might say, "I want you, uh, uh, that person there is 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 secretly in, into drugs." Okay. Now, if I see the wife, the husband, or the wife and, and the children, or you know, I, I won't come out with that. Mm -hmm. I would say to them, I I, I was in uh, Costa Rica. A while back, mm -hmm. and uh, there was a diplomat that was in my, one of my services. Mm -hmm. How many know you have to be careful? Because yeah. they're in the political arena, they're all oh, public. Man, man, man. So I looked at him, I said, oh my goodness, how are you doing? And he says, fine. And he, I could tell that he was nervous. Mm -hmm. And I said, for the Lord has told me, so the man I share with you? He says, yes. So he looked at me like, oh. And I said, God says that you no longer have to take any medication Ooh, because good. you're no longer sick. That is good. What do you say? Huh? I said, you don't have to take any medication. And by the way, your medication is in your night, nightstand. It's in this purple bottle. Oh, wow. What do you say? He says, yes. I says, do you want it to be to be relieved from it? He goes, yes. He gets healed. The wife knows nothing. Hallelujah. Good Again, we need, to, we need to be taught these things. Yes. Yeah. To yeah. have protocol. That's to great. have words that are, you know, your... Uh, your, your tongue season mm -hmm. that it may be palatable. You understand? Yes. But I think sometimes we have learned in a way because we get so zealous yeah. of saying, oh, I can say, thus saith the Lord, that you don't realize that you are speaking and you are the ambassador and the reflection of Jesus Christ. Yes, that's good. And Jesus, to, up to date, has never spoken to me with any disrespect and always with honor and love. Amen. So why do... Fivefold ministers think that they can. No, oh, that's good. Good work. Good teaching. But I've been learning that. So wisdom, is, uh, the Lord gives us. Can I tell you something? Please. And I want everyone to hear this. And this is something yes. God gave me. It's, it's revel revelation. Okay. He told me once, he goes, son, I want you to read where I speak to one of my disciples. And I said to him, ye of little faith. How many remember that? Yes. Ye of little faith. So, and he says, what does that mean? This is how he teaches me. So I, I start going through everything I can. I started about faith, and I thought about, what does it mean? You know, and so I said, at the end of my study, I said, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that good? I don't know. That's true. So he says, okay, let me help him, he tells me. When I said to him, ye of little faith, what, what did I give him? What do I give you? He goes, well, faith, because faith is a gift. He says, so if I give my people 
what, it's really good. If I give my people faith and it's a gift, do I give a dumb gift? No. Do I give an incomplete gift? That's good, that's good. Do I give a gift that's not already mature? Mm. Oh, goodness Lord. He says, I wasn't talking about faith, my son. I was talking about the obedience to faith. Oh. We all have the equal amount of faith within us. It's the obedience to faith. Wow, that's a good teaching. Mm. So he said, look at my son, David. Mm -hmm. His obedience to faith was his yesterday and experiences. Because he said, wait a second, why are you scared of that, that uncircumcised uh, Philistine giant? Why are you afraid of him? Mm. Because... I killed a bear and a lion with my own hands. Mm -hmm. What is he? Through experience, obedience to faith. I see. That's good. That's real good. Did I catch that? Amen. You get that? So, so what we have been taught, again, I'm trying to show you something. We, we, every time we read the word of God, ask the Holy Ghost, give me revelation. I don't want to know the word by its, uh, by its period and its, its T's and its... I want to know by revelation. What do you want me to know of this? Okay. The Holy Ghost will, because the Bible says, how many know that God does not go back, the Lord does not go back from his word? Amen. And it says the Holy Spirit will what? Teach you the deeper things, revelation. So when God began to teach me many, many things, but things like that, about, and I would say, God, that's different, that's different. Mm -hmm. He says, no, it's not different. It's those who have, who have a muddled, my word. Mm. Muddle my word. I guess. So now when you think about it, how easy now is to be obedient? Mm. Is it, well, if you think it that way, That's you good. say, wait a second. Uh, my obedience has to be me. Faith is him. Mm -hmm. So God says, if you only had faith as small as a mustard seed, you can move a mountain. That's right. That's, That's really God good. moving in, not you. Mm, really, really good. Well, how come we haven't moved a mountain? God can only do that, not you. Come on. That's right. But he's, he wasn't talking about his faith gift. He's yeah. talking about what? Obedience yeah, to faith. Obedience wow. To faith. Turn to someone and says, obedience to faith. Oh, obedience yeah. to faith. Isn't that good? Wow, 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 wow. Hallelujah. So, in your experience, have you seen, uh, I know you use the word of knowledge to help in your healing ministry, right? Now, how did you... Uh, no, the healing minister is upon you. Well, because the Lord had said it. He had told me, yeah. I'm separating, sanctified, and consecrated. Yes. You'll have the authority to be under my glory. Yes. Remember at the yeah. age of 14. Uh, I, you will go throughout the world, and through you I will heal my people. That wow. means that God was going to use me. Mm -hmm. But let me share with you. It's not, it's not the fact that he gave. It's a vote I accepted. Oh, that's another key. Okay. It's not always what he gives, because he already is given. given. But are you accepting what he said oh, about your oh, life? Oh, my God. Oh, you see? And I'll tell you how I accepted. Okay. And I got ridiculed, but I didn't care. I wanted it so bad. Oh, I want to be like Smith Wigglesworth. I want to lay hands on them. I want to roboco, and I want to blow on people and let them just I think you do. Yes. <laughs> but I, I want to do all those things. And I was so excited that I would go down the street, and I would see a dog that's limping. Because huh? I did dogs first. Come on. Wow. <laughs> and I, really and I, would, I would walk down the line and said, what's wrong with your puppy? Oh, he, he sprained his back leg. And I said, oh, really? Can I pray for you? So they looked at me like, you're weird. I said, he goes, I don't care. Go right ahead. And I would pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, heal this dog. And I meant it. I let my hand go, and the dog started running without any more pain. And he goes, how did you do that? I said, God did it. He goes, God, God through me. Okay, Jesus name. So then I would go, then I started getting a little higher, another round. Mm -hmm. I started going to uh, Kmart. This is good. Yeah. I'd go to Kmart, and I'd be by myself. I'd say hours. I'd walk in there, walking all looking to try to find people that were sick. And then I would say, man, why, why is your, do you do this? She goes, I've been having this. I've got a chiropractor. Oh, really? I said, can I pray with you, for you? And she says, well, who are you? Um, I'm just a, a, a Christian. And she goes, okay. So I put my hand and I would pray and then she'd go, oh my God, oh my God. I got healed, right? And people would hear it. So little by little, I was called in that, that city of happy holy hands. They just call me, oh, that's that guy. He's happy holy hands. 
And so when when they how long did this go on? Oh, I, you, you doing the experience of about Rockland. about I, I think about maybe a year, two okay. years. Okay. So I just started doing this because mm -hmm. watch this. I was making me sure of who the God was in me. Oh wow, wow. that's good. You see? Yes. I was making me, and then I would look at someone. I said, I went for an interview. This is, the, I'm sure, I went to an interview because I wanted to get this job. And so I, over the phone, I said, can I give you a word from God? I know this is probably going to stop me from getting the job, but I just saw something. She goes, what is that? I saw you had a phone call from somewhere else, not in the United States. I mean, not in the, mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. here. And they said that they have elephantitis from the waist down. But God says, they're going to be okay, and you will see within a, a few hours. She says, you got to be kidding me. I said, why? My mom just coming from Hawaii, and she, that her, from her waist down, mm -hmm. it's, they swelled up, and mm -hmm. then I said, just call her back and said, just wait another two hours. A few hours. And she did, and she was completely healed. Oh. So she called me back, she goes, I need for you to come work, because I need you. <laughs> Remember, we all need... To have someone that can hear God. Amen. Hallelujah. In the Good days word. of old. Come yes. on, in the days of old. Yes. He may not want Jesus or God in the days of old. But they would say, find me somebody who can decipher this dream. Yes. Find me somebody who can tell me what God is speaking to yes. Hallelujah. Now, sir, we only got about seven minutes. What do you How sense in here? Is it... Maybe do you want to pray for somebody, or do you want to sing, or what's the spirit telling Let's you? Say, what, 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 what do you want? What does the audience want to hear him? You want him to pray for people? You want him to sing? What, what does everybody want him to do? Sing. 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 It's always singing. You know Worship. what to Shall we stand up? Yes, if Let's I can stand. stand. Hallelujah. I have Let's to, do something. I have to have your book. One more oh, time. Dr. Al, Apostle Al's book. But I Know a God. Isn't that a perfect title? Amen. And they Dr. can go at the Amazon. Yes. And, and purchase the book. Yes. This is a powerful book. I've looked through it. It's amazing. I, I, you can't put it down. It's really, really good. Amen, amen, amen. Now, your you liberty, sir. Okay. What would you want to do? <clears throat> oh, slow or fast? Do you want something fast? I like something slow. Huh? slow. There you go.
let me live.